the title of my presentation, Phil in Brain AVM, best, what are the best pra practices? So uh, I don't know if you see my screen. Yeah? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So this is uh, the uh, uh, chemical uh, formula of uh, the uh, field. So when we look uh, quickly to, uh, to all of this, we see that this is a non-adhesive liquid material, which is dissolved in DMSO, the dimethyl sulfoxide. So because the fact it came on the market after Onyx, so people were saying, oh, this is Onyx, but uh, uh, so uh, it's uh, a iodine uh, uh, opacification liquid material. This is the only difference uh, than Onyx. Uh, I don't think so. So clearly uh, we uh, um, understood from our experience that they are uh, totally two different liquid materials. So. Of course, there is a iodine uh, contrast, so which allow us uh, on the CT scan performed after the procedure to see if there is some bleeding or whatever. So you can see here on the left side, the fill, and on the right side, the uh, uh, onyx. So from one part, you have the tantalium uh, opacification and from the, uh, with the artifacts. And so from the other side, you have the fill with the iodine. So now uh, we uh, arrive to uh, this question is, uh, is it the same liquid material? So with the different contrast medium, of course not. So uh, uh, when we compare both of them here, we have a, a experimental injection in water. And on the other hand, we have fill. So upside we have, uh, Onyx and downside we have fill. On the right side of the screen, we have uh, as the injection of the liquid from the artery to the vein. So from our artery to vein, it means that we want to see the behavior of the liquid when it crosses from a small vessel to a big vessel from the artery to the vein in the in in AVM. So let's see at the beginning how behaves uh, 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 onyx. So onyx, you can see that it uh, it leaks, as you can see it here inside the nidus. And once it arrives at the level of the vein, you have this kind of leakage on the wall. And so this leakage corresponds to exactly this. And so uh, this is a characteristic which, which is really very, very important when we are treating an AVM, especially by the venous approach. Uh, uh, when you look to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to the fill, so you can see that the fill, once it arrives to the level of the vein, so you will see it here uh, soonly. So at this level, you will see that here, you can see it, it's detaching inside the vein. You can see the detachment of the liquid in the vein. It's exactly what happens when you inject it in water. And so you, you get a kind of node. And so this node detaches. So it's exactly what happens. So nowadays, huh, in our practice, it changed our practice a lot. So this is the liquid that we need for the arterial approach. Huh? So this is the one which uh, I regularly use uh, when I'm treating an AVM by the arterial approach. Huh? So when you go by, by the, uh, uh, from the artery to the vein, so when you are occluding, especially partially an AVM, you are not curing the AVM. So th because the fact that uh, the onyx leaks on the wall of the vein, and because the fact that the AVM is a kind of node uh, that uh, superposes uh, anidus and veins and whatever, so you can partially occlude a primary vein or a efferent vein without knowing it. And so because the fact that it doesn't detach, you don't see what happens. You don't see that you went from a small vessel to a big vessel. And like this, you can occlude partially a vein, which could be responsible of the delayed bleeding of the AVM uh, when you are treating. So clearly here nowadays, especially when I'm going through an AVM uh, uh, to, the, to, to the treatment, uh, to a partial treatment of an AVM by the arterial approach, so I, I will choose uh, the uh, um, uh, fill because I know that once it goes to the vein, it will, uh, so here I have to stop and to take another pedicle. So clearly, uh, like we were using the glue, but it's not glue, so we have a lot of time to inject it uh, clearly. So the uh, um, fill behaves like this. So when you inject it inside the artery, it, arri uh, it arrives to the level of the big vessel and it detaches. And by detaching, we know that we arrived till the, uh, till the level of the vein. So you will tell me uh, when we inject glue inside the, the AVM and so when we arrive to the vein, we are afraid to get a bleeding of the AVM and whatever. And so why you are not afraid? 
when you have this detachment with the fill. So it's because of this. So when you put the same volume of a non adhesive material, so which is uh, the uh, fill, and the same volume of a glue inside the blood, the result is not the same. The volume is not the same. So the, here, the result is much bigger than uh, the fill. And so it's adhesive. It attaches uh, blood, and it makes a, a bigger node. So this is why uh, 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 we are afraid that the glue goes inside the vein. We are much less afraid to, to see uh, 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 fill detaches inside the vein. So here is. An example, so why and how we use fill in AVM, so a big AVM, uh, uh, so I don't have to go through this AVM in one session, artery or vein or whatever. So the first uh, uh, session is to go through the nidus by the arterial side. So the fill is the ideal liquid agent. So you can see that here, we are, they are only arteries fed by the liquid. You have the nidus here, which is fed, but you don't see any vein feed it here. So this is a uh, intranidal aneurysm, which was blocked with the, with the fill. And so we know that uh, in the second session as well, so we came back and you can see here that we are excluding all the uh, feeders to the AVM. So we are entering inside the nidus, but we don't feel the vein. We don't expose our patient to a risk of bleeding after the procedure. And you can believe me that with fill now, we reduced a lot the risk of bleeding of those intermediate sessions it means that when you are occluding partially in AVM, so with fill and with adopting the uh, technique that when once fill arrives to the vein, so we stop and we change the pedicle. So the uh, risk of the procedure becomes really very low. And so once we have uh, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of occlusion. So we occluded the vessels without attempting the vein. And now by the fact that we know that we can go through the AVM by the vein, here we go, the nidus is much more reduced. And like this, we go by the vein. And so we occlude uh, the nidus here uh, using the porcelain technique. So <clears throat> this is the final control here as usual. So as I told you this morning in the, in, the, in the session of the AVM, so we have rarely a venous ischemia after the treatment, and this is a six months follow up of the patient. So fill and dual catheterization. So when you are fitting by the arterial side, uh, a, a total AVM, so it, to, to cure an AVM, if you put your fill inside the, the artery and so you inject it through the nidus, it detaches. Why it detaches? Because you have a flow effect coming from the patent vessel. Now, <clears throat> uh, this is a when you put a, a second microcatheter and you occlude all the feeders to the vein here, you will obtain a stagnation. There is no washing effect anymore, and fill stagnates inside the vein and occludes the vein uh, as uh, when we wanted to uh, to to cure the AVM. So here is an example. Uh, so it's a simple example: an occipital AVM with two mean feeders, uh, two mean feeders, the supply by the carotid artery, two microcatheters. So this is uh, the multiplug technique which was described by Aboud, uh, so uh, by the double catheterization technique. And after what, so security, uh, he uh, described the technique. So it's not a variant of the technique, but it's a multi-plug. So it means that you, we catheterize different pedicles to the AVM and we cure it in one uh, session. So this is the result, uh, uh, final result, six months follow up. It's okay, it's occluded. And again and again, so no uh, ischemia. Uh, here. So uh, this is uh, another case, uh, which is a, uh, a tectal AVM drained by the tectal vein, the precentral vein and the superior vermian vein. So uh, here we have uh, a, a catheterization of the nidus. You can see that uh, they are en passant artery. Uh, so uh, we went uh, by the game is to occlude the AVM by the venous approach. So we went by two microcatheters here, uh, but if you can see here, we came by the um, uh, inferior um, cerebral ve uh, vermian vein. And so you can see here, when we arrived at this level, so we rectified the vein, it was impossible to go through the uh, um, uh, superior cerebral vein. So when we went with only one catheter here, so we rectified the vein and it was impossible to put the second one. You can see the macro of the second one. They are marathon catheters. 
So the second one was proximal. So we couldn't put coils here because uh, we have the feedback uh, of the microcatheter and whatever. So we decided with the distal one, as usual, as always. So we inject EVO. So it means uh, onyx or, or squid. Uh, but uh, so by the proximal one here, it's a wonderful situation to inject fill. So this is a variant of the pressure cooker technique. And so by this variant, we could exclude the nidus. And so this is a, a, another uh, application for the fill, uh, fill technique and the total cure of the AVM. So uh, thank you for your attention.